Hey everyone, Matt here with Nightrun Studio. Up until now, we've just been leaving this enemy kind of just moving around without any animations. And while it kind of works, it definitely looks a little stiff. So in this video, we're going to add some animations, and we're also going to use animation events, which will allow us to specifically time our attacks so the player has a chance to evade right up to the point where the attack hits him. Let's get started. Now first things first, if we're going to animate this enemy, we need some animations. So this won't be a step-by-step -step tutorial on how exactly to do that. If you're interested in a video like that though, let me know in the comments. What we will do here though is I'll show you how I'm setting up my animations, and then we'll get into the nitty gritty of how to make it work easily and fluidly with our code. So first off, I'm just going to click on my CRT robot and then hit create in my animation pane. I'm just going to navigate to my animations folder and I'm going to name each of these after the state that it's for. So the first will be CRT charge. I've got a bunch of animations that I made up ahead of time. So I'll just grab all of those and drop them in. And we want the charge to loop and I want it to be fairly quick. So a lot quicker than our actual patrol animation. And I'm also going to want to take this last frame, which at the moment is only going to run for one frame, and then make another copy of it a couple frames down so that it lasts just as long as all the others. All right, that looks okay, but it's a little bit slow. It doesn't look particularly frantic. I'll just shorten that up to about 24, and that's ah, much better. Now he looks like he's actually charging. All right, we'll create our next clip. This one will be CRT player detected. And again, I've got a couple of animations for this where my robot just turns and looks at the player. I'll stretch those out. I want it to happen relatively quickly, but we'll give a couple frames to each. And again, just take that last frame and copy it a couple extra frames in. Next up is CRT Patrol. These ones are pretty similar to my charge, only I want this to take much longer. So I'm actually going to stretch this one out over about a full second. As per usual, I'll grab the last frame and just make sure to extend it so that it lasts as long as all the others. Looks pretty good. And final animation, this time we can make our CRT melee attack. I want the attack to happen pretty quickly, so we're not going to give a lot of frames to each. And as usual, we'll repeat that last frame. All right, with that done, we can head into our animator. Now, in the past, I've often had trouble keeping my animator making sense. I find that it just turns into a massive mess of states and lines, and it just becomes ugly. That was until I came across Barden's 2D platformer series, which I'm pretty much taking this animator controller setup directly out of. So just wanted to make sure to give him credit for that. So what we're going to do here is just use our entry and exit points, and we're going to set up a parameter, which will be a Boolean value for each of our states. When we're in the state, it will be true. And then when we leave the state, it will be false, causing us to exit that state. So let's just make those. I have melee attack, patrol, player detected, and charge. At this point, I'm just going to create a transition going right down to my melee attack. I'll click on that transition, and I just want to make it so that when melee attack's true, it comes here. Then we'll transition out, and when melee attack is false, we'll leave this state. But I also want to turn off exit time and set my transition duration to zero so that it immediately transitions. Next, for patrol, we'll do the same thing. I'm actually just going to move patrol to the top here. That way, when I click, it shows up right away. And when patrol is false, we will leave, and I'll also set my exit time off and my duration to zero. Similarly, player detected will be when player detected is true. If I move it to the top again, it'll come up right away. And when it's false, we can leave. As always, setting exit time and duration to zero. Then we'll just move charge to the top here and do one last set of transitions. So when charge is true, we'll head into charge. Oh, and actually, just to make things a little easier here, I'm going to set my patrol state to be the default. That way I can get at my other transition easier. And also, patrol is what we want to be our default. And of course, we'll leave charge when charge is false and we'll have no transition or exit time here. I'm just gonna dock my animation tab down here. So now that we've set all of that up, let's actually make these transitions happen in our code. I'm gonna open up enemy base state as well as enemy. All right, so in our base state, we have these virtual voids enter and exit, which are called anytime we enter or exit any of our states. And so this is the ideal place to set our animation parameters, true and false, as we leave and enter the states. However, we're gonna have to head over to enemy first. We wanna make sure that we have a public animator reference called anim, and this is what's gonna allow us to actually talk to our animator. Now, when we get back into base state, we can actually fill these enter and exit methods. Here we'll just talk to the enemy script and tell it that we want its anim to set its bool. And here we'll use animation name. So whenever we enter a state, it'll be whatever the name of that state is. And we'll set it to true. And then we can actually just copy this line almost exactly down into our exit method and just change the value to false. 
This is why it was so important in our animator that our parameters use the same name as what we're using in our code. Just gonna take a sec right now to navigate down into my animations and make sure that for both player detected and melee attack, we turn off loop as we don't want them doing those things over and over and over again. And now let's run a test. All right, so things looking good. He's patrolling. Oh, we get the detect and that's where it falls apart. He's stuck in detect. All right, now it took me a second to get to the bottom of that one and you might not actually even have this problem, but here's what I figured out. If we head into any of our states, you'll notice that all of these override methods have base dot and then the name of the method. These all refer back to our base state, and it just means that's overriding the same method within our base state. However, in my player detected state, for some reason, I never included the base.exit in my exit override. And so the exit method for player detected was never being called, and that's why we weren't leaving the player detected animation. All right, so now when we get in here, the enemy starts off patrolling, he detects me, charge is working, and he's still not attacking. Well, we're a little closer anyways. All right, so what's going on here is that at the moment we are entering melee attack state, which takes a fraction of a second to play. However, the way we've coded it, we call the attack, but then immediately leave the state. And so there's no time for the attack animation to actually play. Now, this is actually a good opportunity as I wanted to introduce some animation events anyways. So what we're gonna do here is create an event in our animation so that only after the animation has finished playing will we actually transition out of the attack. This also provides us with the excellent opportunity to introduce a delay, so that in our melee attack, when the enemy is still drawing back, he doesn't deal damage immediately. In fact, the player can still dodge the attack at this point. Only once we're six frames in and he lunges forward will we actually call the event that deals the damage. Now to do all of this, we're gonna use animation events, which if you haven't used them before, is this little icon right here. And what we really wanna do is just add an event right here so that our player knows the attack is coming, and then one at the end that says this animation is done. So to code that in, we're gonna pop into our enemy state and scroll all the way down to the bottom. We'll come down into our other functions here, and for now at least, this is where we'll put this. Now we're gonna put two public methods here, and they do need to be public, otherwise the events can't talk to them. The first will be animation finished trigger, and the other will be animation attack trigger, which, you guessed it, is when we trigger the attack. So you might be wondering, how do we get this method to actually talk to our states. Well, fortunately, we have a reference to our current state here. So we can say current state dot animation finish trigger. And here we can call current state dot animation attack trigger, which we'll just call this method in our current states. Now, obviously it doesn't like that yet. And that's just because our states don't yet have these methods. I'm actually just gonna copy all of this for now, head into our base state where we can create the virtual void methods for this. And all we have to do here is we're just going to turn them into virtual voids. And then we can actually remove the bodies as we'll be putting this logic in the individual states. If you want, you can also take the time to make these look pretty by putting your brackets up top so it's nice and clean. Yes, I'm a neat freak. Now we don't need to add these overrides to all of our states, but we will want it in melee attack state. So we can just double click on the title and generate those overrides. We're gonna want the animation finished and attack trigger. These are gonna appear at the top, but I'm actually just gonna take them and put them at the bottom as that makes more sense to me. So currently we have things set up here in our enter method so that we deal all of our damage. And then at the bottom, we switch states back to patrol state. I'm just gonna take that switch state function and put it down here in our animation finish trigger. So once the animation's done, we'll call this method and we'll go to patrol state. Next, we can come up here and grab all of this stuff around dealing damage and finding the enemies in the area. We don't want this to happen immediately while the enemy's still winding up. We want it to happen when he actually lashes out. So we'll put this all in the animation attack trigger. All right, back in Unity, we can go to our melee attack animation. And we just want to find the point at which the enemy lashes out. We'll click add event. And then over here on the right, I'll just make it larger. We can click on what function we want. And this will show all of the public methods that are on the game object that has this animation. So in this case, our CRT robot. Here, we're going to do the attack trigger. That will call the method we just wrote, saying we want to deal damage. Next, we'll head on over to the end of the animation, add another event, and this time select our animation finished trigger. And with that done, we're ready to test again. Patrol's working, he's detecting, and yes, our attack is now working as well. Now, these animations aren't final, and I'll be working to tweak the timing and position and that sort of thing, but it's looking pretty good. I hope you found that one helpful. If you have, please be sure to like or subscribe to the channel. Leave me a comment below if there's other features you'd like to see. And until next time, this is Matt with Nightrun Studio. Cheers.